Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to the second part to the little scriptable objects video series that was not going to be a series, but turned into one. Uh, in this video, we're going to just make it so that our, our class display can be shown in uh, another scene and then have some buttons that will switch between the different scriptable objects that we've created. So we're going to create a new scene. We'll just give it a user interface uh, or a control node for the root. We'll call this scene uh, class selection menu or something like that. That should probably be good. We're going to add a new vertical box container. And then we're going to make it uh, uh, this should be the full rect and the vertical vertical box container should also be the full rect. Then in here we can add a center container and now we can instance, let's save this first, class selection menu. Now um, we can instance by clicking this, we can instance our class display right here. And our center container right here, um, We'll make this, we'll change the size flag so that it expands vertically, like this. And I guess our class display here is, that's not really working um, how I want it to. It centered it, obviously, but I'm not sure that that's exactly how I wanted it to be. So. Let's do, okay, so our snap set up in this room as well. Let's, let's instance, let's add a uh, HBox container to the bottom here. And inside of here, we're going to add some texture buttons. Texture, texture button right here. We'll call this first one uh, night button, and then we'll just duplicate this and we'll call this one wizard button. I'm still, I'm still really learning how Godot's UI works. It is a little bit tricky to get used to when you're first learning. And we'll call this one, hmm. Well, I think we want each of these. Yeah, I know what we'll do. We'll call this one thief button. Okay, so we can we can assign the textures to these. So wizard.png should go. You're going to scroll down until you find. Where is the textures here? Ah, textures up here. Then just drag it onto normal for each of these. Oops, that should be the night though. Let's do dot png. There we go. Night. This one's wizard. Oh, texture. There we go. And this one is thief. There we go. But we're going to want to, uh, we're going to want these to be centered in a nice way that looks good. So we're going to um, create some center containers like this. Oh, but the center container is probably going to do the same thing, I think. We'll see here. And then we'll have the center containers. Um, we'll have them expand our size flags. We'll do expand horizontally. There we go. That actually works. So let's create another center container. Drag the wizard into it and then make it expand as well. Oh, not vertically though, horizontally. There we go. And then we'll create one more center container in here. And we'll drag the thief into it and make it expand uh, horizontally as well. There we go. 
Now they're all nice and uh, laid out, but we're, let's make this expand vertically in our size flags because um, that will divide the space evenly between these two, which I think looks pretty good. So why isn't our class display working? Well, I actually figured this out um, while we were doing that. And the reason is because we used a, a color rect uh, and color recs don't, they don't work quite the same way as other control nodes in the fact that they don't have um, kind of like a space that they're, they take up uh, the same way. So what we can do is we can change this right here. We're going to do change type and change it to a panel. And um, you can theme panels so that uh, the panel could be the right color and stuff. But I'm going to change it to a panel and then inside of here we have to extend panel, our script. Because um, we're no longer a color rec, so we can't extend that. Um, but everything else should work the same. And now when we come back to here, uh, let's re-instance it inside the room. Let's see if that fixes it. I think, I think this will fix it. Nope, it didn't. Um, let's see here. Uh, size flags. Expand. Expand. Does that fix it? I don't I don't know what I did wrong here. I've I've done something different because my original source works correctly. Um but I, I don't know what I did wrong here. So we've got our center container and it works for these, but for some reason our class display is not actually taking up the space that I would expect it to. So, um, yeah, maybe this is good, I guess. It's a learning experience. It's just always annoying when you run into something during a tutorial. I guess it's more like a code along than a tutorial, but at this point, well, Let's do, let's just hack it <laughs> uh, for now. We'll take out the center container. Well, we'll change this, change type. Instead of doing a center container, let's just do a normal uh, container, I think. Like this. And then let's re-instance our class display in here. So let's instance class display. Holy cow, it's still it's still like flattening the this right here. And I don't know. I don't know why it's doing that. Um I mean, I can do it like this without the panel. It's not what I want. I could manually drag the panel down, but I mean, if I switch and then come back, I guess it worked. It's just, this is hacked in. This isn't the right way to do it. <laughs> just so you guys know, um, if that wasn't obvious. But, but I think for now, I'm just gonna leave it like this because this is gonna work. So um, if any of you know why I'm having issues with this, let me know in the comments below because uh, I'm still learning this engine. And um, so any feedback from you guys as we go along is very helpful to me. So let's, and helpful to everyone because then everyone can know why it wasn't working correctly. So now let's, let's set up uh, a new script on our class selection menu right here. And well, actually, you know what? Function, update class data. Let's just let's just do this the the quick way. Um, could use signals for this. Get a little bit fancier so that you don't have as high coupling. Um, but I'm just gonna do it the easy way. We'll we'll well we're going to use a signal technically. Um, we'll do pressed. So click on your night button. Come over to node and then on signals do pressed. And we're going to attach this signal 
to our class display and we're going to do on night press that will create a function so we'll connect that you can see now we get a new uh, a new function in here called on night pressed which means this function will run when we click on the night button right here so all we have to do is call uh, update class display and then um, load well let's just let's just grab this right here and um, we'll do night just like that perfect and now let's try and do it for the wizard button come to signals pressed uh, connect copy this have it do it a wizard okay and then we'll do one more right here. Do signals pressed. Oops. We got to choose um, the class display node to connect it to. And then this is our final bit of code. Thief. And what happens when you reload the same um, scriptable object is that it just gives you the original reference. So there's never more than one um, reference to the resource. Uh, so they will always return the same exact instance. You, basically, you never have more than one instance of a scriptable object. So even though we're loading it multiple times here, uh, which it would maybe be better to give each button here their own reference to the scriptable object so then you don't have to load it every time. But either way, this works. Uh, even though we're loading them multiple times, it always gives us the exact same one. Just in case you ever change anything on one and it also doesn't, it doesn't recreate new ones. Um, so now what we need to do is come back into project, project settings, and under run, we need to change the scene that we run by default. We want to do our class selection scene instead. So now when we run the game, we get our class selection scene right here. We can click on knight, wizard, and thief. And you can see it updates our UI based on the scriptable object um, that we're loading for each of them. So thank you guys so much for watching this quick little series and hopefully it helped you figure out how to do scriptable objects and maybe learned a little bit about Godot's UI even if I'm still learning that as well. Uh, if you enjoyed the video give it a thumbs up. I've got plans to do another Godot series and we kind of talked about that in the last video as well. I'm leaning towards something turn-based because I feel like Godot is good at turn-based stuff so I kind of want to show what it's good at. Uh, at least I like it for turn-based stuff with UI, so I kind of want to show that side of Godot as an engine. And so I'm leaning towards like a small roguelike or something. Um, we'll, we'll see. I haven't decided 100% yet. But if you have ideas, suggestions, leave them in the comments, and I'll take a look at them. So thank you all so much for watching, and I will talk to you all later.